And why I want to bring to the attention of people that I'd much rather, unless we have to incarcerate somebody, that I'd much rather use the power of sheriff or the power of legislation to divert from incarceration. Just so you know, we have the lowest jail population in the state of California for a county our size. The lowest jail. We are record large. Now, I'm not saying that so that you generate applause for the sake of that number, but I want you to under understand the importance of it. It's because, for the first time, there's a symmetry formulating between district attorney's office, believe it or not, public defender, adult probation, sheriff's department, even juvenile probation, city hall, community groups, that A, whatever the motivation is, that in the chain, uh, the chain uh, of order, of cost, incarceration is the most expensive. If that's your driver, recognize that. But if the driver is about saving lives, divert. Use pre-diversion. Use something that gets people into behavioral court, into drug court, into programs that are held accountable. Don't incarcerate and help folks follow through so that they are able to re-enter in a way that we can all hope for it, and not having to squander taxpayer dollars. And we're successful. We're getting more successful with that. And as sheriff, I'm proud to carry forward that agenda that really had been uh, so well established by our predecessors. But I see concerns on the horizon that I do not want to paint this picture that everything is as progressive or forward thinking as it should. Despite a record low population, I mean record low, we're 800 below our capacity. Just three years ago, it was significantly different. We were almost at capacity. So when that occurs, many people might feel like that's a good thing. But when I see that the population is beginning to substitute itself for a spike and a continually escalating population of people who are mentally ill, and when I see the jail system now convert from not just a jail system, but could double potentially as an asylum for those who require mental health treatment, then that also obligates me, Ashura, to stand up and say, as a city and a county who's sensitive to these subjects, we must all call attention of all hands on deck, the Department of Public Health, with the mayor, the board of supervisors, with Human Services Agency, and all the CEOs that we certainly outsource to, contract out, to help with the population where you cannot expect the jail system to triage something that uh, is requiring such 24-7 uh, kind of attention. It, it, it's just lulling ourselves into a false sense of security. And when you couple that with high-profile debates in California or in the United States about gun control or about people who are just not being attended to, then I feel that much more of a role to stand out and say, listen, we need to take care of our people. It's the sheriff's department you know, to be able you know, to stand up and say, this is how well we can try to rehabilitate. This is what we need to try to rehabilitate. We need help over here. And not always act in the machismo way that I think that a sheriff would be expected to act and not recognize where there are cracks in the dam. And I have a perfect example of this. Just recently, I was at a meeting of all state sheriffs. Uh, I mean, of all the county sheriffs in the state of California. And it was a real test for me, too. Because when they were debating the bills in Sacramento and in Washington, whether it was on immigration, or whether it was on gun control, or whether it's on realignment, I found myself being outvoted 57 to 1. <laughs> but, but they were very concerned about me being the only one. They came up to me and they were kidding. I understand. I really do understand. I want you to know that, um, that I want you know, to just make a statement, but at least explain my statement. Um, and, and it wasn't, it, it was an okay tension. But it was an important opportunity for us to be able to express our viewpoints, uh, no matter what the issue may be. And I, and I believe that they were actually very respectful of that. But I didn't feel uncomfortable, maybe a little, but I didn't feel uncomfortable uh, in you know, articulating, I think, that viewpoint. Because the state of California 
is the largest landmass on planet Earth that incarcerates more people than any other landmass per our population, per the populace of our size. With the exception of maybe China or Russia, we don't really know the true numbers, but if you think about California and how many we do incarcerate, this is why that when we talk about democratic institutions, and when we talk about an independent or progressive perspective, that cannot be detached from the criminal justice or public safety system. And San Francisco really is, I think, helping drive you know, new perspectives and new consideration on realignment. You probably only get headlines as what realignment is. I'm not the only sheriff, but I'm in a minority, small minority, who believes in realignment. I actually think that we'll do a better job on the county level of welcoming back prisoners from the state and putting them through a more effective reentry system, depending on what got them in incarcerated in the first place or in their history, in treating them in a very tailored and specialized way, I actually am more confident that we'll be able to do something about it and demonstrate to the rest of California and the country that this may be the right way to finally take what has always been incarcerated first and rehabilitate third uh, in a system in a country that doesn't necessarily understand that quite yet, even in a democratic administration. And so, I'm, you know, I'm just very motivated and propelled by, I think, all the possibilities that we can deliver on this stuff. And then when I look more locally at the threat uh, in the uh, unframed of City College, for example, right? I mean, this is an institution that I know, like, so many people here, like Bruce Wolf and so many others who I've worked with over the years. Uh, congratulations on your award. Um, and... You know, you care about the future of City College. To me, you have to understand that as a member of the Board of Supervisors, we lifted great muscle, got it? We lifted great muscle to help save the Unified School District. Proposition H was led by former Supervisor Tom Aviano, and then succeeding initiatives that we all sort of collaborated on. But if you think about it, and rightfully so, as we helped save Unified School District with rainy days, etc., more people from San Francisco attend City College than more San Franciscan youth attend the Unified School District. And so, not that that one is more deserving than the other, but you cannot neglect the other, especially because it becomes so cost prohibitive to enter San Francisco State or a private university. What other institution is there except a city or community college? What other institution is there? So for my clientele, for my clientele, if you didn't know this, we have the first charter high school in the United States embedded in our jails. It's the Five Keys Charter School. And it shows such incredible promise that the LA Sheriff, Sheriff Baca, Lee Baca, who's the sheriff of the largest sheriff system in the United States, We've talked, and he is now importing the Five Keys Charter School in the LA jail. And I told him, you can do this, and I'm flattered, you can do this, but you must keep the name San Francisco Five Keys Charter School. <laughs> but my whole point is, my whole point on this is that City College becomes that outlet for us that when we talk about what's next after incarceration. We need to be able to hook up the right pipelines to give opportunity to people who are formerly incarcerated so they're less likely to obviously come back into our system. That's a sign of success. Those are indicators of the tell you to press and push uh, however I possibly can, but I can't do it without your help. And it's so good to be here with you tonight. Thank you.